Baron does a great job of sports. He's a good kid and very tall, you know. That kid is pretty cool. He does well in school. Baron Trump. Trump's youngest son did live in the White House, but he spent most of his life out of the public eye. Because his parents are millionaires and he is their youngest son, Baron has had a very limited life. The young ex-president and Mrs. Melania Trump found out they were going to have a child not long after they got married. Barron was born on March 20th, 2006, and he was Donald and Melania's first child together. Recently, there was some very bad and sad news about Barron Trump that made people very worried. If you're interested, stay with us as we talk more. Childhood. In 2005, six months after they got married, Donald and Melania found out they were going to have their first child. Melania says that when she told Donald she was pregnant, he was a little surprised. I told him, you're going to be a dad when he got home. And his response was that he needed some time to think about it. It was a big surprise. After that, he became very happy, she told other people. Trump also said, I thought we were going to have kids, so I wasn't totally shocked. But I was shocked by how fast it happened. Things went by so quickly. Millennia gave birth to Barron on March 20th, 2006. The boy was 8.5 pounds to begin with. Trump didn't go into the delivery room because he thought it would be easier for Melania if he wasn't there. After the fact, Melania said that her eight-hour labor was really very easy. Everyone is great. It's great that she's so happy. Trump told people after the baby was born. Trump said he named the baby Baron because he liked the name and hadn't had a chance to use it for his other two boys. Melania agreed with it until the very end. He changed his mind about the name. I've always loved that name, but I never had the guts to use it. I told Melania about the idea and was about to take it away at the end, but she told me I couldn't. Trump said on the Oprah Winfrey show, you just can't take it away. I've been calling him Baron while he's been in my stomach. Baron grew up in New York City's Trump Tower, his father's high-end apartment building. He had a whole floor just for himself. Baron has never known anything but wealth because of this. When Melania talked about her son with Parenting Magazine, she said that Baron liked planes and airplanes a lot when he was little and told him she was a hands-on mom who made his breakfast and lunch. He was encouraged to be creative by her even if he did draw on walls. She told him that his imagination is growing and that it's valuable. We can paint over what he draws on the walls in his playhouse if he does. Baron liked building towns and airports with Lego bricks and magnets when he was a kid, but it's not clear if he wants to go into real estate like his family did. He also has style. She said in parenting that he likes things that are clean and white. He works on big projects. He really does have a vivid imagination. He likes to build things, take them apart, and then build new things. When he draws, he's very picky. He keeps track of everything he sees when we travel. Melania also told the magazine that she calls Baron Little Donald because he is so much like his father-in-law. He has a strong will and is a very smart boy. She said that he is strong-willed, has strong opinions, and knows exactly what he wants. She also said that he had a great time with his dad and that most of that time was at his home in Palm Beach, Florida called Mar-a-Lago. As a family, they had a great time. They played golf and ate dinner together. It was never Melania who was in the picture shoots. As long as Donald has been president, she has always stayed out of the public eye. She didn't even hang out with her friends, she spent time with her family. Now that Donald has left, people say that Melania is still very private and keeps a close eye on her son, Barron. A person in early 2023 said that Melania's friends are her family. A lot of people who belong to the Mar-a-Lago club know and see Melania, but they're not friends. They don't hang out or talk to each other. She has always spent time with her family. She loves Barron very much and looks out for him a lot. This is not new. The source also said that Melania's parents who live at the Trump family home in Mar-a-Lago are close to Barron and have helped raise him. A person with political and social ties to Melania, the first lady, says that her main job is to take care of Barron. He is quiet and shy and she has been a good mother to him all these years. The person also said that Barron and Melania's family are everything to her. She has always cared about her family. In addition to the volunteer work she has done, her main goal is to take care of her family. Baron speaks two languages. Besides English, he can also talk to Melania in her native Slovenian. Melania says that when Baron was young, he would call his grandma a lot and talk to her in Slovenian. Melania wanted Baron to be able to speak more than one language, but she and her husband agreed on what language Baron could use in public. I believe that speaking more than one language is better. She told people that when you come to the US, you learn English. Baron went to some of the best schools in the country for a number of years. Barron went to Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School in Manhattan's Upper West Side when he was in grade school and lived with his parents in New York City. After finishing the rest of the school year in New York, Donald became president on January 17th. 
He took the whole class to Washington, D.C. when he was 10 years old and in his last year at Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School. He took about 80 kids, some teachers, and Secret Service agents to the White House to meet Barron's dad. At the end of the day, they stayed the night in a hotel in the nation's capital before going home. After that, in May 2017, it was announced that Barron would be going to St. Andrew's Episcopal School in Potomac, Maryland. The cost of going to St. Andrew's was around $40,000 a year. The Obamas, Bushes, and Clintons were the last three first families, and they all broke another rule. All of them had sent their kids to Sidwell Friends, a private Quaker school in both Washington, D.C. and Bethesda, M.D. It was made public that Barron would be going to the Oxbridge Academy in Palm Beach, Florida, after Donald's term as president finished in 2021. This school is where Barron finished with the class of 2024. It wasn't that long ago that Donald Trump became president. Even though the family was happy, there were problems that came up because of the quick change. How things are in the White House. The family got even more attention when Donald Trump was elected president of the United States in 2016. They were already used to Donald's real estate deals, reality TV shows, and other business ventures. Barrett did not run away to Washington, D.C., right after his dad's inauguration, though. After his father became president, the boy stayed with his mother at Trump Tower for almost five months so that he could finish his schoolwork at the Upper West Side's Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School. At first, people thought that the stay back was because of a fight between his parents, which could mean another split. But when the real reason was revealed, people's worries quickly went away. On June 11, 2017, he and his mother moved into the White House. They started going to a prep school in Maryland called St. Andrew's Episcopal with Barron. Donald said, he goes to a great school in New York and has a lot of friends. But I tell him that if this happens, daddy will help people and can help kids like him, this makes him smile. His name is Jack and he is nine years old. He is strong, smart, and gets it, he can see it. Since John F. Kennedy Jr. in 1963, he was the first son of a president to stay in the White House. He lived most of his life out of the public eye, but he did show up at some holiday events at the White House Zoo. One time this happened was at the April Easter Egg Roll, where he and his dad signed cards for people in the American Armed Forces. He also agreed with his father's decision to release the turkeys before Thanksgiving. A few weeks later, he took his mom out on the North Portico to wait for the official Christmas tree from Wisconsin to be put up in the Blue Room of the White House. When Donald Trump talks at his presidential campaign office in Des Moines, Iowa, he says that his six foot seven inch tall teenager is already much taller than he is. He says that he is tall because he ate all the food that his late grandmother, Amalia Navs, who was Melania's mother, used to make for him. The Daily Mail reports that Donald told Barron, you know you're a special boy and added, I told you you're going to be a basketball player at the speech. He replied, well dad, I do like soccer. I thought basketball would be better for someone your height, but you can't always convince them. On October 14th, 2020, Melania said that Barron had tested positive for COVID-19, just like she and Donald. Even though he had tested negative before, the first lady says that her worst fear came true when he was tested again and the result was positive. Melania also said, thank goodness he's a strong teen and hasn't had any symptoms yet. I was glad we all went through it at the same time in some ways. We could help each other get through this and spend time together. He has now been tested clear. Barron quickly got better. But life in the White House has never been for long. And the family moved back out in the end. What had happened next though? Barron Trump moved out. Where did it take him? Barron Trump went to school. Barron moved to Mar-a-Lago with his mother and father after leaving the White House in 2021. Barron started at the Oxbridge Academy in Palm Beach, Florida in August 2021 as a member of the class of 2024. This was revealed by the school. His folks both came to his May 17th graduation. When NYU security saw that Barron had arrived at Manhattan College, they knew for sure that this was true. He and Secret Service officers were seen outside the library. In the same month, Melania told Fox News that Barron had suggested that he go to school in New York and live in the family's tower in Manhattan. The man chose to come here because he wants to live in his own home, learn, and be in New York, and she respected that. She kept calling him a great young man and then said, I'm so proud of what he turned out to be that he was strong, smart, knowledgeable, and kind. That's great. Soon after, the dad did an interview and said that his son has applied to schools and gets into all of them. From a point of view, he's very sought after. People says that one source also said it is possible that his mother Melania will go with him to school. There were a lot of Secret Service agents around Baron Trump when he first started college at NYU's Stern School of Business. They wouldn't let him be alone, especially after the attempt to shoot Trump at a gathering. Baron would rather stay in Trump Tower where he lives with his family, then move into a college room. His mother Melania does a great job of protecting his life and always makes sure he has enough time. 
To make things even more interesting, people at NYU have been taking pictures and movies of Barron on campus. The Daily Mail asked some of Barron's classmates to react, and a number of them did. Some people told the news that they wanted to judge him on his own. Others said they were interested in him because of how he lived and how he looked. Some girls joked that their moms would make them go on dates with him. I believe Barron could have gone to any school, but the fact that he chose one of the most liberal ones in the country tells me a lot. It was said that one student said, I was blown away and just really intrigued by the fact that he would pick my you. Anyone would want to be friends with a Trump. One kid made a joke. Someone else said that Barron wouldn't be responsible for the problems his father caused. He said, his dad is his dad is his dad, but he's his own person, so I won't judge him. The Stern School of Business at New York University is one of the best business schools in the country, and its college program is one of the toughest in the country. It is said that only about 5% of applicants are accepted each year. Alan Greenspan, who used to be chairman of the Federal Reserve, and Kenneth Langon, a business mogul, are two famous graduates. Barron turned 18 on March 20th, 2024. That makes you think about how to treat him now that he is an adult. To his defense, Chelsea Clinton, who is the daughter of Bill and Hillary Clinton, said that he had the right to privacy. I believe he is a simple person. I strongly believe that as a private citizen, you have an unquestionable right to privacy, and I believe that the media should not bother him, she said. Some people heard on May 20th, that same year, that Barron had been chosen to be one of the at-large delegates for the state of Florida to the Republican National Convention in late July. Such an event would have been Barron's first step into the political world. But two days later, Melania Trump's office said that he would not be able to attend the gathering because he had other plans. Donald Barron Trump really did have a lot of friends who liked him, but what about partnerships that are stronger? Barron Trump's friends and family. Barron is the youngest of the former president's five children from his three marriages. He has four half-siblings and one sister, Tiffany. Even so, because he is 13 to 29 years younger than his brothers, he was raised mostly as an only child. Tiffany and Donald's SR could have spent some of their childhood together, but she was already living in the Los Angeles area after her mother, Marla Maples, and Donald's SR. Split up in 1999, Barron became an uncle when he was still a child. Kai Trump, who is only one year younger than him, has four cousins. These are Carolina Trump, Arabella Kushner, and Chloe Trump, along with his nieces and nephews. Barron has six nephews, Eric Trump, Tristan Trump, Spencer Trump, Joseph Kushner, and Theodore Kushner. In general, Donald Trump likes to keep as quiet as possible about his wife Melania and their son Private. However, he answered a question from podcast host Patrick Bet David, which came as a surprise, about whether the 18-year-old has a girlfriend at the college he just started. Because the Secret Service is following him around NYU, his experience is different from most other students, but so far, his peers have only good things to say about him. When asked, does he get along with the girls at NYU? Is he still there? I don't think he's ever had a girlfriend. He did not avoid the question about Barron's love life. Instead, he got right to it. He told it like it was. I don't think he's ever had a girlfriend. The Daily Mail claimed that Trump praised his son as usual and said he was a good-looking guy. The man always made sure to compliment his youngest son, sometimes on how tall and smart he was. He also liked to brag about how Barron got into every college he applied to before finally starting at the Stern School of Business. He's very smart. He does well in school and all that. He does well at his grade school. He's also a really nice person. Do you see that? Trump said before he talked about his love life, he said that he doesn't mind being alone and that he gets along with others. But Melania kept Barron so far away from everything for a reason. All of his fame came at a terrible cost. Watch the video to find out why. Barron Trump made threats. The same thing happened with Barron Trump as it does with all famous people they have stalkers. It wasn't like other stalkers though. She was thinking about something much worse. A woman from Chicago is accused of making death threats against former President Donald Trump and his teenage son Barron in June. She had been to the boys' school in Florida months before. Court and police records show that she was questioned by police outside the building. Tracy Marie Fiorenza, 41, was arrested this week in Chicago after a federal criminal complaint against her was made public in Florida. The complaint says she sent death threats to another person, which is a crime that could get her up to five years in jail. At Fiorenza's detention hearing on Monday at the Dirksen U.S. Courthouse, prosecutors said that she met a sheriff on her way to the Palm Beach County School in March, where Trump's son goes to school. Rosenblum used her experience with Florida police to ask that Fiorenza be held without bond. 
She said, these are not idle threats from behind a keyboard. The Tribune got police reports through an open records request that showed around 7.30 a.m. A security guard at the Oxbridge Academy in unincorporated Palm Beach County called 911 on March 7th and said that a woman named Tracy was asking about Baron Trump outside the front gate. Police in Palm Beach County were told by the security guard that the woman was known to be stalking a famous student. Documents show that she had previously called kids at the school in October and asked several times if President Trump's son went there, but that the officials were not following the right procedures, which led to the harassing calls. The report said that Fiorenza told a sheriff's officer at the scene that she wanted to talk to the headmaster because she had checked on her own to see if Baron was at the school. The story said that school officials accused her of trespassing and said they would arrest her if she went back to the school. When Fiorenza was given a warning, she left the land. In the late afternoon of that day, U.S. When the Secret Service arrived, they found her at a gas station close and drove her back to the hotel. After two months, on May 21st, Fiorenza wrote an email to the school's director saying, I will shoot Donald Trump's R and Baron Trump straight in the face whenever I get the chance. The lawsuit says that she sent another email to the same headmaster a couple of weeks later, this time threatening the younger Trump's life in early June. The complaint said that in June, a U.S. Secret Service agent called Fiorenza and set up a meeting at the agency's offices in Chicago. There. She was given copies of the emails. Fiorenza said she made the effort to write them and send them by email from her home in southwest suburban Plainfield at the time. At Fiorenza's detention hearing on Wednesday, Rosenblum told the judge that the person was a real danger and should not be released on bond. He said that there were no conditions of release that could ensure the safety of the community even though he understood that the behavior might have been caused by mental health problems. Rosenblum said that the threats are very deadly in nature. Firenze has sent hundreds of emails to a wide range of people, including government leaders and celebrities, saying she was being attacked by bad people. These emails include the ones she sent to the President and First Lady, which are described in the complaint. In 2018, Fiorenza was trying to get in touch with people who worked at the White House, according to another letter that the Secret Service got. Fiorenza began shaking her head during the prosecutor's case not long into the hearing. Then she got up and spoke to the judge directly, even though her lawyer told her to be quiet. Fiorenza said, I've been calling the school for years trying to get them to follow the rules for reporting people aren't taught how to use the devices. Not anyone was listening to me, so I was going to give parents flyers before school started to warn them. She also said that Donald Trump is in charge of a group of pedophiles and that the government saw her kids while she was a teacher in Chicago public schools and even used remote stimulation on them. Fiorenza had another public Facebook page that talks about what she did. It says that she taught social studies and graduated from Carl Sandburg High School in Orland Park. The account has a lot of angry statements and pictures that are against Trump, as well as claims that they are a member of the Illuminati, a special group. Daniel Hessler, her court-appointed lawyer, said, the accusations are pretty scary, but there is really no evidence she's a threat to anyone in the real world. He went on to say that there was no evidence that she was mean. Hessler said Fiorenza told him that psychotronic weapons are talking to her directly in her head, and she's just trying to stop them. He said she would never get close to Baron Trump because she's scared of him. It seems a little strange, but it doesn't say she's dangerous. She protested by shouting, I have a master's degree in psychology, and her lawyer shot down the idea. No, I'm not crazy. The U.S.? Magistrate Judge Jeffrey Cummings told the police to hold Fiorenza until he could be sent to the Southern District of Florida. Court records show that she is being held at the Metropolitan Correctional Center in Chicago. Barron stayed strong through a terrible event and even helped his father sometimes. Barron Trump, who is helping his dad run for office. The Republican candidate said last weekend that Barron Trump was the reason his father went on Aiden Ross and Bussin with the boys. Wednesday, Fox News' Maria Bartiromo asked Trump if Barron had helped him reach out to younger people. Trump said, a little bit he talks about hot guys I've never heard of. He tells his dad, that guy is hot. One third of the 41 million Gen Z people polled by NBC in September said they would vote Republican. This means that the youngest son's view could be very important in the last few weeks of the campaign. In August, he went on the famous conservative stream channel Aiden Ross to talk about the July 13th attack on a rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. He also talked about his plans for immigration and the economy. My kids told me about you. They told me how big it was. Barron told his dad he's really big Trump told Ross. Kick is a website that competes with Twitch. At the time, Ross's most watched stream on Kick was the interview. Between 400,000 and 550,000 people watching for most of the hour-long talk. Trump has been on at least six podcasts, while Vice President Kamala Harris has only been on two so far, but both have gotten millions of views. Trump said that he would be on the popular podcast The Joe Rogan Experience in the coming weeks. Reports say that Harris will also show up. 
Barron has never had this kind of impact before. He was still a little boy when Trump first ran for office and moved into the White House in 201617. Now that he is old enough, Barron seems to be helping Trump get more young voters, which is a group that Harris has done better with in polls. He is doing this with his brothers Donald Jr., Ivanka, and Eric. But helping his dad wasn't the only thing he could do he soon showed how good he was at politics. First time in politics as a Florida delegate. Barron Trump, the youngest son of former President Donald Trump, has been chosen to be a delegate for Florida at the Republican National Convention. This was announced by Jonathan Torres, the head of the state party, on Wednesday. The head of the Republican Party of Florida, Evan Power, said that the 18-year-old high school senior will be one of Florida's 41 at-large delegates to the national meeting where the GOP will publicly name his father as its presidential candidate for the November election. NBC News was the first to report that Barron Trump would be a delegate. Donald Trump Jr., Eric Trump, and Tiffany Trump, Trump's youngest daughter, are also from Florida and will be at the conference in Milwaukee from July 15th to July 18th. Power said in an email statement, We are blessed to have a great group of voters and members of the Trump family working together as part of the Florida delegation to the 2024 Republican National Convention. Florida's RNC delegates will be kept in the dark by the Trump family. Eric Trump was chosen as chairman of the group. He and his father, Donald Trump, and Power, who is the state GOP chairman, talked on the phone with party leaders Wednesday night. Since the state always votes Democratic, Donald Trump has won it twice, including by more than three percentage points when he ran for re-election in 2020 but lost. And the state party has mostly backed his run for president this year, even though he hasn't been officially named yet. This time around, the party was in a tough spot because Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, also ran for president as a Republican. But Florida party leaders said they would vote for Trump, even though their home state governor was running for office. In September, party leaders voted to get rid of a loyalty pledge rule that would have made GOP presidential candidates back the eventual Republican nominee in order to be on the March 19th primary ballot in their state. Trump backed the idea, but the DeSantis team made it clear they didn't. Also, the Florida GOP had accepted several high-profile Trump supporters who had family members who were RNC at-large delegates. Kimberly Guilfoyle is engaged to Donald Trump Jr. Michael Bulos is married to Tiffany Trump. Pam Bondi is a former state attorney general and a longtime Trump supporter who has run pro-Trump super PACs. Sergio Gore has been an advisor to Trump for a long time. And Ike Perlmutter is a well-known Trump donor. And several Republican leaders at the state level who chose Trump over DeSantis even though it was risky. Leave a comment to let us know what you think about the mysterious life of Donald Trump's youngest son now that we're done. Also, don't forget to sign up for more.